Good morning, friends. It's lovely to be with you again this morning. Uh, we will be reflecting on the Word of God as well as spending time together praying on things that um, the Lord has put on, on our hearts, things that we feel strongly about. And so this morning I'm going to read from the Gospel of Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, from verse 22 to verse 23, reading this morning from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, I will read from verse 22 to verse 33. Listen to the word of God, a very familiar chapter, a part of scripture that we will be reading this morning. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side. While he dismissed the crowd, after he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went on to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began beginning to sink. Cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the, bo in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the son of God. When they had crossed over, they landed in Gennesaret. And when the men of that place recognized Jesus, they sent word to all the surrounding country. People brought all their sick to him. Maybe to that point, uh, may the Lord bless to us the reading of his word now and always. Amen. Friends, um, a hymn writer, his name is F. Pratt Green, penned the hymn that help, helped me to understand more of where Peter was. He said, when our confidence is shaken in belief, we thought secure. When the spirit in its sickness seek but cannot find a cure, God is active in the tensions of faith not yet mature. Matthew, where we have read, it's quite a familiar story. Um, and in this story, we see how courage can fail us and our confidence can be shaken. 
Peter had managed to do something that in ordinary terms will appear to be impossible. He had been able to walk on water. Um, the background to, um, to this incident is that the disciples have just witnessed Jesus feeding 5,000 people. And so at the end of that, uh, Jesus realized that there was something strange happening. Um, and the most commentators will, will say that at this particular point, there was a strong feeling that Jesus is indeed the, the Messiah that had been, they have been waiting for. And, and so in, in the Jewish nationalism, the Messiah had a connotation of a political liberator who will come and set them free. And so it, it might have been a feeling that the time has come for the enthronement of Jesus as the king. So he ordered his disciples to leave so that they can go ahead of him because he thought that he will be able to handle the crowd. So he also now um, retreat to the mountain to go and pray. And while he was at prayer, the disciples were caught in a furious storm at sea. And it was a very scary moment for them. Scary in, in the sense that the waves um, were quite strong and they were crashing on this boat that, that they were in. It was not easy time for this fisherman. Remember that they were seasoned fishermen, but, but things were, were not easy for them. And well, we, we read uh, from Matthew that Jesus came to their rescue. Because they see him coming, um, see him walking on the waves. And remember that they are already frightened by, by what is happening at sea. Uh, because of this relentless wind that is that is crashing and the waves. And when they saw Jesus walking towards them, they thought it was a ghost. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage. It is I, don't be afraid. It is I, don't be afraid, were the words that they needed to hear desperately. And the impulsive Peter did not waste the time. Lord, if it is you, he said, tell me to come to you on water. Come, Jesus said to him. Peter did not hesitate. He got out and started walking on water towards Jesus. It was it must have been a, a moment of of courage and much confidence for Peter that he, he was able to walk on water. He was he must have been impressed with himself. Moreover, his confidence and trust would, would have been boosted. Because he felt a sense of security in the presence of Christ. And I imagine that the fellow disciples would have been very impressed and would have admired the, the move that Peter has taken. They would have admired his courage and they would have been left speechless by, by his display of faith. Nevertheless, Peter's confidence was short-lived 
And this reminds us that courage can at times fail us. When, when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And then he started to sink. He called Jesus in his time of distress. And Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? Peter had managed to do the impossible. He was able to walk on water. But the moment he took off his eyes from Jesus, he saw danger and he started to sing. And I think a Christian faith, it's, it's something uh, of a puzzle at times because we, we have our highs and our lows. Um, at one and same time, it, it would appear to be very simple and, and yet very complex. The distractions of life makes the degree of commitment extremely difficult for, for any person. Peter realized that when he started to sing, he saw the dangers in front of him. He panicked and he forgot that he was in the presence of the creator of the universe, the one who, who can control the storms, who can call the storms and quieten the waves. He, he forgot the power of Jesus. He forgot the might that this one in whom he was in his presence has to control everything in life. And winds of life I like that. They can be a huge distraction to us. Our hopes can be dashed. Our dreams can be shattered. Our plans can be frustrated. And in times like this, it is quite easy to be, to be disheartened and discouraged. That you want to give up altogether. When we, when we are confronted by the knocks of life, facing the hardships and failures, it is, it is easy to be very pessimistic. That things are not going to work. That things are against me. And that there is nothing that I can do and we land into more heartache and face defeat in our lives. Sometimes we, we stay focused on Jesus in times of, of crisis, but problems come and when they come, they, they appear to be unmanageable, that we, we really cannot even begin to manage these problems that we face. And they can easily dampen our faith and our confidence. Because in times of distress and tension, we sometimes lose sight. And this encounter at sea as Peter started to sing, remind us that we must not lose sight of the presence of Jesus in our lives. That we, we need to continue to trust him. That you can continue to count on him. That Jesus will never ever leave us to sing at sea. He will never allow any, any problems, any challenges that we are facing to sing us. He is already, his hand is already, is, already, is always 
outstretched to reach out to us, to lift us and to catch us. In whatever situation that you find yourself in, don't lose faith in the ability of Christ to pick you up in that situation and to lift you up and bring you to himself because he loves you. It was a Brennan a Manning who, who said that, and I want to quote him, imagine a stormy day at sea your ship yielding to a relentless wind, pummeled by crashing waves, subject to the awesome of force of nature, a force that is both fierce and majestic, a power that is nothing short of furious. Such is God's intense consuming love for his children. It's love that knows no limit and knows no boundaries. A love that will go to any lengths and take risks to pursue us. May that love continue to pursue you in your life. And so that it allow you to see that in the midst of darkness, there is light. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord watch over you. And may the Lord be gracious to you. Have a brilliant week, friends. And God hold you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Father, you are the everlasting God, creator of the universe. Everything that has life originates from you. You hold the lives in your hands. You determine the destiny. You are above everything that we can see. You are great, you are mighty, you are awesome. There is nothing in this life that is beyond your control. There is nothing that is beyond your understanding. There is no place where your, heart, your eyes cannot reach, where your ears cannot hear. There is no place in this life where your mouth cannot speak. There is nothing in this life that is beyond your ability to reorder and to reorganize. So Father, you, you are almighty. And we feel privileged that we can call you Father. And that you call us your children, that we belong to you. That you hold us in your hand. That you have a tight grip on each and every one of us. That you know us by name. What a privilege it is. Because Father, we... I know from this incident of Peter that is recorded in Matthew that even when 
the winds and the waves at sea come crashing on our boat. That you are near to us. That you are present with us. That your company is keeping us rooted in your love and in your mercy and in your grace. So, Father, we, we lift people whose hopes have been dashed, dreams are shattered, plans are frustrated, people feeling hopeless and discouraged, people feeling lonely, and sometimes feeling even that you yourself have deserted them. Father, like Jesus appeared to his disciples in their moment of crisis, as the waves and the wind was beating and crushing their boat, and hopelessness and fear was just covering them in all the directions. We pray, Father, for, for ourselves in situations that make us fearful. That, Father, we, we will experience your touch in our lives. the touch of Jesus, reaching out his hand, touching us and pulling us to himself. And so, Father, we, we know that you, you are in control of, of life, of the world. You are in control of the governments, you are in control of the kingdoms. You are in control of the economies of the world. You are in control of the politics of the world. You are in control of the needs of the other world. You are in control of the sickness, in control of the pain, in control of the hopelessness. In control of situations where people want to give up, in situations where people uh, sense discouragement. Father, there is nothing that is beyond you. So we, we pray for people, we pray for your presence in situations where people are fearful and afraid. We pray for your touch in their lives. We pray that you will restore their lives. We pray that they will experience your touch. They will experience the warp, the firm hand of Jesus and the warmth of flowing out of your heart, filling their lives and holding them tight. We pray this in Jesus' name, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Dear friends, thank you for for your company and i pray god the blessings on your life i pray god's touch i pray that he will go with you and that he will bless you have a brilliant week amen <music>